That's right. Do you hear the Bible talking? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Well, Pastor Jenna, what about the thief in the cross? He wasn't baptized. He couldn't be baptized. Well, Pastor Jenna, the thief went to heaven. He did not. No, he did. Pastor Gino Jennings, an unwavering and uncompromising preacher dedicated to his firm beliefs in God, consistently underscores the crucial importance of salvation in his teachings. His impassioned messages emphasize the significance of being saved, shedding light on the necessity of both water baptism and receiving the Holy Spirit, particularly through speaking in tongues. Pastor Jennings firmly asserts that without these experiences, one cannot establish a genuine connection with God. In his teachings, Pastor Gino Jennings elucidates the process of baptism, highlighting the need for sincere repentance before undergoing the symbolic act. He stresses the idea that baptism is not merely a ritual but a transformative experience, a means through which one's sins are properly washed away. According to Jennings, repentance serves as a crucial prerequisite for baptism, ensuring a genuine and profound cleansing of one's transgressions. Contrary to popular misconceptions, Pastor Jennings dismisses the notion that reciting a generic sinner's prayer is sufficient for absolving sins. He asserts that the biblical mandate for salvation involves more than a verbal declaration. Instead, Jennings emphasizes that repentance, baptism, and the receiving of the Holy Spirit are integral components of the salvation process. He boldly asserts that salvation, as outlined in the Bible, is achieved solely through genuine repentance, baptism, and the infusion of the Holy Ghost. In summary, Pastor Gino Jennings stands as an unyielding advocate for a thorough and scriptural approach to salvation. His teachings emphasize the transformative power of repentance, the symbolic significance of baptism, and the essential nature of receiving the Holy Spirit, all of which, according to him, are indispensable in establishing a genuine connection with God. Bible ain't never told you to hold some old preacher's hand and Christ gonna come in your heart through the hand of a preacher. That's you right. You're a liar. That's right. Regarding the act of immersion in water and the importance of baptism for salvation, there is a prevalent dismissal of its significance by many. Some individuals argue against its necessity by pointing to the example of the thief on the cross, contending that since the thief was not baptized, neither should we be. In response to these critics, Jennings challenges the notion that baptism requires the shedding of blood. He asserts that the thief could not have been baptized because blood had not yet been shed, thereby challenging the argument that baptism is contingent upon the shedding of blood. Do you hear the Bible talking? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Well, Pastor Jenner, what about the thief in the cross? He wasn't baptized. He couldn't be baptized. That's right. Give me the Ephesians chapter 1 and verse, verse 7. 7. And then let's get the thief on the cross so I can straighten that out. Move quick. Ephesians Lord, chapter 1 and that verse 7. Ticking, I got to get away from here. Ephesians chapter 1 and that verse 7. All right. In whom we have redemption through his blood. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. According to the riches of his grace. Now, we have forgiveness, redemption through his blood. Now, the thief could not be baptized. Because no blood was shed. Yeah, that's right. There was no blood shed. Don't you hear the Bible say without the shedding of blood, there's no remission or no removing of sin? Jesus ain't shed no blood yet. So how in the world will the thief going to be baptized? Well, Pastor Jesus, the thief went to heaven. He did not. No, he didn't. In the well, so the thief asked Jesus to take him there. He did not. That's right. You overlook something. That's right. Come on, son. In the book of St. Luke, chapter 23. Follow me. And we'll start reading at verse 38. All right, come on. And the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek. Yes. And in Hebrew, this is the king of the Jews. Oh, yes. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed one on him. One of the malefactors which was hanging railed on him. Saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Yes. But the other answering rebuked him. Rebuked him. Saying, doest thou not fear God? Don't you fear God. Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. Uh -huh. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. Yes. But this man hath done nothing amiss. Uh -huh. And he said unto Jesus. He said to Jesus. Lord. Lord. Remember me. No, take me. Lord, remember me. No, take me. Lord, remember me. What? When thou comest into thy kingdom. No, take me when you go in the kingdom. Remember me when thou comest into thy no, kingdom. No, take me with you when you go in the kingdom. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. You see how the kingdom. preachers twist that up? Twist it. You see how the preachers twist up? That's right. They said that the thief went to heaven with Jesus. You's a liar. That's amen. amen. And he said unto Jesus, He said to Jesus, Lord, Lord, remember me. What? When thou comest into thy kingdom. And what did Jesus say? And Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. Verily I say unto thee, uh -huh. today, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Well, wait a minute. Well, see that passage, Genesis? He went to heaven that day. You 
fool. How you gonna go to heaven before Jesus? Jesus didn't even go that day. In a compelling discourse, Jennings challenges the traditional narrative, boldly asserting that even Jesus, the central figure in Christian faith, did not immediately ascend to heaven upon his death. According to Jennings, Jesus's journey from the cross to the grave was followed by a three-day sojourn in the depths, a departure from the conventional belief that he ascended straight to heaven after resurrection. Jennings emphasizes that when Jesus rose on the third day, he did not abruptly ascend into the celestial realm. Instead, he walked among his apostles, making himself visible to them. This assertion challenges the common understanding that Jesus swiftly ascended to heaven after overcoming death. I won't be going to heaven before Jesus, Jennings emphatically states, highlighting his firm conviction that his fate is intricately connected to the actions of Jesus. Quoting Jennings directly, he criticizes what he perceives as distortions of the truth by certain religious leaders, these blind devil preachers, twisting up the truth. This statement underscores his belief that some preachers misinterpret or manipulate biblical teachings. Jennings then delves into an interpretation of the interaction between Jesus and the thief on the cross. Contrary to conventional interpretations, he contends that the thief did not request Jesus to take him to paradise. Instead, the thief's plea was, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jennings underscores this by quoting the Bible, stating that Jesus responded by promising, today you'll be with me in paradise. According to Jennings, this exchange reveals that the thief simply wanted to be remembered, not necessarily to be taken to paradise. The argument gains momentum as Jennings invokes biblical scripture, pointing to the assertion that no man has ascended to heaven except the one who came down. This biblical reference serves as a cornerstone for Jennings's argument against the widely held belief that individuals can ascend to heaven upon death. In a final poignant quote, Jennings reiterates his perspective, emphasizing the uniqueness of Jesus's journey, not even Jesus went that day. Through his assertions, Jennings challenges established doctrines and encourages a re-evaluation of commonly held beliefs regarding the afterlife and the journey to heaven. If you found value in this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay updated on our future posts. Explore our other videos currently displayed on screen. Remember to live a life pleasing to God, filled with prayer and fasting. Thank you for watching. So if you've enjoyed this episode of Truth Seeker Hub, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for upcoming posts. Thank you for watching.